no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. I want you to make sure that you subscribe and tune in to our awesome watch party. Raiders going up against the Rams Saturday night starts 9.45 p.m. Eastern time. So look underneath the video, hit that big red button that says subscribe, and then click the notification bell. That way you don't miss a thing. This first one's coming in from Top Beats. What up, Top Beats? Yo, Mitch, are you excited that Edwards has moved on? The wide receiver depth chart to the starter on the wide receiver two slot ahead of John Brown, who is not in the wide receiver three slot. Uh, I think the future number one receiver. I'll tell you what. Yes, I am excited because Brian Edwards has the high, highest ceiling out of any receiver that the Raiders have. Love rugs. Edwards is just a different type of breed. He's got the size. He's got the speed. He's got all the attributes that you're looking for in a receiver. To be honest with you, if you're trying to build a receiver on Madden, it probably is going to look a lot like Brian Edwards. He just needs to stay healthy. So am I excited? Absolutely. Martin T., what's up, my dude? Shout out to 81 on your picture. We just crossed 81,000 subs. Still struggled in the red zone, and the return game was awful, too. Please uh, ease my nerves. It's a preseason game. I hear you. I think the pre the I guess I should say that first the return game would have looked a lot better. If it was guys like Hunter Renfro, healthy Kenyon, or healthy Jalen Richard, Kenyon Drake, those are going to be like the main guys out there. In terms of the red zone, the, the thing about the red zone is like in the regular season, people aren't afraid to pull tricks out of the bag. In preseason games, people are afraid to show their hand. People are afraid to show what they can do. So they still play a little bit conservative. So honestly, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Let's go to Yoshi. What up, Yoshi? What's up, Mitch? I'm very optimistic about this year's defense. Do you think this will be a middle-of-the-pack defense this year? So, Yosh, appreciate the super chat. I, I don't know if it's going to be middle-of-the-pack. I actually think on paper it has the opportunity to be a top 15 defense, but I can't sit here and say that I'm confident in being a top 10, though I was very, very impressed on how the Raiders' defense looked going up against the Seahawks in the first preseason game. I get that they didn't have much of their starters out there, but how aggressive they were, how fired up they were, that's what I want to see. Let's go to JR65. Raiders will have a home game at LA. That's a big old fact. I know. I was kind of laughing where we were talking about, oh, teams getting two home preseason games. I'm like, Raiders got three home preseason games. Like, let's face it. That's a fact. Even when they go up against San Francisco, that's a home game. Guaranteed. So, yeah, JR65, I'm with you. Let's go to Scott. Scott, appreciate the $20 super chat. We already took your shot earlier. Um, we, we literally got four $20 super chats. And for those of you that didn't watch this, if you're watching this on Saturday morning, go back to the live show on Tuesday. We just ripped like, I, literally it was like 16 shots in a row. So if that's where, if that's why I'm acting the way I am, that's, that's y'all fault. Let's go to Top Beats. All right, so I'm concerned about Solomon. Who do you think is better, Solomon or Jefferson? And do you think Phylon can beat him out for a backup DT position? So in terms of who's been the better DT at camp thus far, Quint Jefferson has been better than Solomon Thomas. In terms of Phylon or Thomas, you can't really compare them because they're going to play different positions. So I actually think Thomas is going to be a little bit more of an edge rusher than he is going to be an actual DT. They're, the Raiders are afraid of his size overall. In terms of... Phylon, he has looked very good as a defensive three technique. The Raiders just right now think that Thomas is a little bit too small, but I still think that Thomas is going to have the better year than Phylon. And if I'm wrong on that, more than happy. We got Ricky Color black background. All right, uh, Derek Carr playing against the Rams. I would be shocked if he is playing against the Rams. And to be honest, if there's a report that comes out after this video is released, I'm sorry, but Derek has played literally like two series in the three years of preseason football with John Gruden. So I do not believe that Derek Carr is going to be playing in this one. Now, if you guys want to watch this game, the Raiders are seven-point favorites going up against the Los Angeles Rams Saturday, 10 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to be live doing a watch party. Hopefully you guys are tuned in too as well because it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to get it on. So you know what? Go ahead and predict the score. Raiders going up against the Rams. Go down in the comments section right now. Get your score predictions in. I've been saying all week that the Raiders are going to win this one 20 to 14. And I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. But I want you to go down in the comments. Let me know. Predict the score. Raiders against the Rams. Hollywood, what up? Are there any decent free agent offensive linemen we can pick up our backups look suspect? In terms of backups that I'd be confident in, not really. I mean, if Mitchell Schwartz was healthy... That would be a different conversation. I'm just going to give our players a little bit of time here to hopefully develop 
Am I confident in Brandon Parker? No. Am I confident in Jared Jones? No. No, I'm not. And there's not really too many other players out there on the defensive line that I would be confident in. So, like, I am going to pump the brakes right now. But Mitchell Schwartz would probably be the only name that I'd say if he's healthy, I would think about it. The issue is I don't think he's healthy. What up, Scott? Any last-minute additions we should make? I mean, realistically, the only uh, the only last-minute addition I would think about still is K.J. Wright. K.J. Wright, if he's still out there, why the hell not? He's still a great linebacker. And then Nicole Roby Coleman. I know that Nate Hobbs played well, and I know some people out there are still confident in Nevin Lawson. I'm not. But if you could still go out and add a good nickel corner, I think it's worth going ahead and doing. So those would be the two players that I would go ahead and mention and say maybe somebody to think about. What up, A-Rod? Uh, hey, Mitch, any more word on Sherman or Wright? Have not heard anything on Richard Sherman after that whole video, his whole dilemma of everything that went down. I have not been paying too much attention to Richard or. Uh, Wait, Richard Sherman. In terms of K.J. Wright, he's uh, still out there. And obviously he wants to be either, I think, on the Seahawks or on the Raiders. He would fit both of those defenses very well. It's just the Raiders, for the first time in a long time, have a very deep linebacking group. What up, Armin? Where will Darren Waller be in the top 100? It's a great question. By the time that this video goes out on Saturday, you might already know that. I believe, personally, that he's no doubt a top 40 player, which he's going to be in the top 40. He's probably going to be ranked behind George Kittle and Travis Kelsey. Kittle and Kelsey are probably going to be in the top 20. If I had to put my money down, I'm going to say Waller's probably going to be like 33. But that's just, a, that's just a guess. So what I want you guys to do right now is what's your number, right? So out of the five things that you see on screen, how many of those things have you done? So for me personally, I've been to an NFL game. I've been to a Raiders home game. I bought a Raiders jersey, and I bet on a Raiders game. So I would go down in the comments section right now, and I would type four. So if you've done all five of these things, five. If you've done three of five, type three. If you've done none, type zero. What I am curious about, though, is how many of y'all have bet on a Raiders game? Because I bet most of y'all haven't. So if you haven't bet on a Raiders game yet, listen up to the deal I got going on. Chatsports.com slash Raiders. Promo code Raiders125. So imagine a world where you can... Put down $100 and then get $125 for free. You can actually put down $500 and get $625 for free. You can bet on Raiders preseason games, regular season games. This deal is not going to last forever. And literally, I haven't had it the last four months, so it comes and goes. So go to chatsports.com slash Raiders, promo code Raiders125. If you have any questions whatsoever, please hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRens365. Let's go to William. If you guys didn't know, my middle name's William. Was Phylon's refreshing play, yeah, I read that right. Was Phylon's refreshing play his talent or more of the system? I think it's a, I think it's both. Phylon has talent, and he's always fit well in Gus Bradley's system. Now, he hasn't played the past two years because of off-the-field issues, but when you go back to 2018-2017, he was a productive player, and he was actually pretty damn good in Gus Bradley's system, but I think it's a little bit of a mix of both. What up, Noah? I got the same jersey. Which position is most important to you, defensive end or defensive tackle? I'm going to go ahead and say DT because I have more confidence in our defensive ends. Like, I have more confidence in Gakwe. I have more confidence in Crosby and Furl. Like, I have more confidence in those three players than I do Quentin Jefferson, Jonathan Hankins, Solomon Thomas, Gerald McCoy, like, Phylon. For our defense to take that next step, like, I know Crosby's going to be great. I know Gakwe's going to be great. I know Furl's going to be good. But if our defense wants to take that next step and actually be considered a top 10 defense, we need the defensive tackles to be great. So for that reason, I believe it's DT. All right, so what was your favorite game to attend? Mine was Packers versus Raiders a couple years back. As many Raider fans as Packers at uh, Green Bay. I'll say it really comes down to two games for me, right? Now, I've been to three Raiders games in my lifetime, and it's the Raiders Monday Night Football game against the Denver Broncos. The first Raider game I ever went to, that was... An incredible experience. I'll never forget it. I went to Raiders against the Lions week 9 back in 2019 at the Coliseum. That was a fun game. Probably the most entertaining game. But, I, I mean, I got to say Raiders against the Jags week 15, the last game in the Coliseum. It was just one of those where it was a very heartbreaking game because it was the last game, especially the way it ended. But you could really tell how much that stadium meant to so many people. I've never seen so many grown men, grown Raider fan men cry after leaving that game. And it just kind of just goes to hit on all the memories that people created at that place. So 
I'd probably say Raiders Jags, the last game at the Coliseum. What up, Doug? Will Waller play this week? I hope so. So Darren Waller, he was at practice today on Tuesday. I would imagine if he continues to practice the entire week, that's a good sign. But I just don't see why the Raiders put him out there on the field. And not that I don't want to see him back. I just, it scares me. And like, there's nothing to gain by playing in the preseason for a player like Waller. So for that reason, sit him down. You know he's an amazing player. You know he has the chemistry with Carr. Why risk the injury? I'm not going to risk the injury. I actually hope he doesn't play. But if he does, obviously, I'm going to be watching. So do you all do, wow, do you want Waller to play? Type P for play. Or I want you to type D for don't. I want to say P for play. But I'm going to type D for don't because I don't want him to get hurt for the regular season. If Waller gets hurt, you want to talk about full panic mode, I'm going to go full panic mode. Got a super chat coming in from Project1337. I believe Nate Hobbs will be a beast the two weeks Lawson is suspended and will keep the slot cornerback starter spot. I hope. If, if Hobbs can outplay and be a reliable starter, good. I think that makes it a lot easier to move on from Lawson. Though... Gruden is a sucker for hard practice guys, and that's exactly what Nevin Lawson is. He's a player that shows up in practice, he competes, he battles it out. The issue is, I don't give a shit all that time about practice. I want to see a guy that compete on the field on Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays. Lawson's not a very good corner, but for whatever reason, Gruden's got a uh, you-know-what for him. I kneel for one. What up, man? Mitch! If Regis can continue running like he did this first game, do you think he'll threaten Josh? J no, 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 no. So Neil, I, uh, no. Uh, Josh Jacobs is the number one running back. Kenyon Drake is the second running back. Remember Chris Warren? Remember that name? People were giving him the nickname Baby Bo, Baby Bo Jackson, because he led the NFL in rushing yards in the preseason, and he got cut. I'm not saying that that's going to happen to Regis. All I'm saying is this. Regus is not even close to Jacobs. He's a good running back. He's not Josh Jacobs, and he's not going to threaten Jacobs whatsoever. He's not going to threaten Kenyon Drake whatsoever. The only way he's going to threaten and get snaps is if, like, they're trying to rest Jacobs and Drake at the end of the fourth quarter because the Raiders are blowing somebody out or they're getting blown out. Then you would see Trey Regus come out on the field. What up, Troy? Mitch, I hope we didn't make a mistake on our offensive line. We are one injury away from being atrocious, that in my opinion. Raiders, 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 thanks for the insight. So I'm not, I don't feel bad about getting rid of Trent Brown because he's already been a major headache for the Patriots, who would have thunk. In terms of Rodney Hudson, I, I wish the Raiders would have kept Hudson. That, that would have been a, a big player that I wish they, they would have remained with because I think one of the biggest reasons why offensive line struggles is because of the center play. So as soon as Andre James left, Nick Martin was not very good, and I think that's what led to a lot of breakdowns on that Raiders offensive line. Jared Jones wasn't good, though I didn't expect him ever to be good, and Brandon Parker needs to step up as well. So ultimately, it really comes down to John Simpson because if Denzel Good has to kick out the tackle because of an injury, you want John Simpson to be able to kick into guard and be reliable. But I'm kind of with you. The offensive line does still scare me a little bit. What up, Enrique? we got a few more questions here on the Raiders report. Hey, Mitch, keep up the good work. Raiders 24-13. to 13. Enrique, that's your prediction. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Don't like it? If you like Enrique's prediction, go ahead and like the video. Speaking of 24-13, will you watch the Raiders versus Rams game? Go down in the comments, type Y for yes, or I want you to type N for no. I'm going to be watching it, and I hope you guys are watching it too here on the Raiders Report. We had 80,000 views last week. I want to get to 90,000 views this week, so please go ahead and subscribe. What up, big time, Willie? Merrick Hobbs, Abram Arnett, Hayward Mullen, no fly zone. Did you already put this in? Yeah, this is already a super chat that you, we got to earlier big time, but I appreciate it. If that is no fly zone, I'm all about it because uh, that's a young, a very young and exciting group. And if it's a young and exciting group, that hopefully means plenty of years to come. Martin T. Clee did get some pressure, but I was expecting him to really dominate against Seattle's second and third team. I actually could not agree with you anymore. I was impressed by him, but then you kind of had to hit yourself. and You're like, wait a minute. He's going up against a lot of backups. So, Martin, you and I are definitely on the same page. I want to give a shout-out to James Jones for the $5 Super Chat. If you got a question, please go ahead and get it in, but appreciate the $5 Super. What up, Phil? What Week 1 starters do you see playing this week versus the Rams? Week 1 starters, I'll go Colton Miller, Andre James, Incognito, 
probably the entire offensive line. I hope that we actually see Ruggs and Edwards a little bit more. And then in terms of the defense, everyone minus a reliable veteran. So I don't think we'll see Hayward. I don't think we'll see Quentin Jefferson. And I don't think that we're going to see Morrow either or Littleton. But besides that, you're going to see a lot of starters, especially in that secondary. What's up, James Jones? My favorite game was Raiders versus Titans in the Coliseum back in 2002. Well, damn, you're you're lucky to be able to go to that one. I I don't even remember what I was doing in 2002. I was probably I was nine years old. So nine years old. I don't think I was going to any Raiders games back then. What's up, Master? Over under 13 interceptions for our defense this year. I'll say. Oh, man, 13 INTs is actually quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and take the under on that one. I would love to be able to say the over, but I'm going to take the under. What up, Glory? Better season, Merrick or Mullen? <sighs> Statistically, I'm actually going to go ahead and take Merrick because I think Merrick's going to have more opportunities for interceptions, though Mullen's probably going to end up finishing the season with more tackles and maybe more pass breakups. Last question from Mr. Vagode. If you want your question here on the Raiders Sport Live, you got a super chat. Do you think it's time to unzip the pants of the Raiders roster and whip out our Nathan Peterman? I think he erected himself as the number one quarterback. What about you? No. <laughs> Appreciate the creativity, but it's, uh, it's a big old no. But uh, this is one of those questions that I would love for you to screenshot and put it on Instagram because at 100% I would save it. Speaking of IG, if I didn't get to your question, I'm sorry. Hit me up on IG at MitchellRent365. This show was just unbelievable. I appreciate everyone out there. And remember the challenge. Post a picture of yourself on your Instagram. Tag me in the best Raiders gear. The winners are going to be featured here on the Raiders Report.